Hi, welcome to the corner of Knit and Tea. This is episode 280, no, 385. <laughs> My name is Laura and I'm also known on Instagram and Twitter as Fluffy Kira. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, which is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea where I sell my hand spun pattern, my hand spun yarn and knitting patterns. Wow, today I'm really off. How are you? It is Monday, July 18th. Clearly I am out of the habit and my mind is a little bit elsewhere. I hope that you are doing well. Um, I have been, as always, consumed by Tour de France and Tour de Fleece, so I have lots of spinning content to show you today. I have some knitting content and some discussion of some up and coming projects, and a little bit of just life chat in general. So let's get started. It is um, in the triple digits here today. I come to you from just outside Kansas City. I'm kind of on the border between Kansas and Missouri and it is hot out. It actually is not terribly humid, but it is quite hot and we are supposed to be in the triple digits all weeks. So today I am drinking iced tea um, and I forgot to bring the canister with me, which is just par for the course, I guess. I am drinking Republic of Tea's Strawberry Basil Iced Tea. Um, these come in large packets that you can make um, a pitcher full. So it is a, it looks like an enormous oversized tea bag and the instruction is to add um, uh, I think eight cups of water. What I did to make mine was I boiled just a little bit of water and made an incredibly, incredibly strong tea. And then I poured that little bit of hot water into a big container of ice water um, to make my basically brewed iced tea. So it's not cold brewed, it is hot brewed. Um, but what I do is I just make a very concentrated portion and then I add all the cold water. I already added some ice cubes and they melted, um, but this is just a great one to um, kind of celebrate summer um, lots of strawberry and a little hint of basil. Um, and the other thing I thought of that I do sometimes with my drinks in the evening is sometimes if I want my drink to be icy cold, um, instead of putting ice cubes in it, I will put frozen strawberries in it. We have lots of frozen strawberries because my husband makes himself a um, power smoothie with protein powder every night um, because he is uh, quite athletic and does a lot of working out. Anyway, so we always have bags of frozen strawberries in the freezer and I figured out that you can use those basically like ice cubes and then at the end you can eat the strawberries. So um, I like to treat myself like that a few times a week and my thought is that strawberry basil iced tea would be lovely with basically iced strawberries. So I haven't done that here, but I might do it later. Um, and I am drinking it today in my roastery mug, which is a Kansas City coffee house that I love, um, but today definitely called for iced tea. That is really good and really refreshing. Obviously it's herbal, it doesn't have any caffeine, um, but I already had a Diet Dr. Pepper this morning, so I'm good to go. <laughs> anyway, that is the tea today. So let's talk about the knits. Um, I have uh, a lot of different things to show you and I'll kind of go through them. Um, the thing that I have finished is that I finished a pair of socks for Roxy. I cast these on months ago when I needed, or at least a few months ago, when I needed a roundy roundy project. And I have only been working on them in bits and pieces um, as I need something to do or um, I'm out and about and I finished them. So they are fraternal socks. They're not quite identical. They are made out of shoulder and stall Fortissima Mexico. I think I already um, chucked the label. Oh, it might still be here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, nope, I have it. They are um, Fortissima Mexico from Scholler and Stahl. It is a German sock yarn. Um, when it came, I thought they were gonna stripe. I didn't think it was gonna be kind of a little bit of a gradient, but it is. Um, and I knit my standard sock pattern. These are 52 stitches around um, and a heel flap and gusset um, and basically just plain um, with a somewhat rounded toe. And I have two of them, so they are a pair. These are for my niece, Roxy, who will be nine in the fall. Um, so I have one pair um, done. Uh, and I will be casting on some new pairs for her and her brother. Um, and I brought those today just to show you. I'm not going to cast them on right now, but I will be doing some traveling in August. And so um, one of the things I love to take on travel, particularly if it's going to be an active trip, which this is, 
Um, uh, I like to take some mindless sock knitting with me. And I ordered a while back when some of the new Felici stripe colors came out. Um, I ordered two different sets. I have two balls of each of these. Um, this is Summer Nights, which is orange and pink and blue and lavender. It's really, really pretty. And then I also ordered um, the rainbow. This is called Psychedelic Sunset. This one they've definitely had before. It is their rainbow colorway. So I ordered two skeins of each of these and my plan is to make each of the children a pair of socks. I haven't decided who's getting which yet. Originally I decided these would be for Miles and these would be for Roxy um, because Miles loves red and because he really actually does like rainbow stuff. But I have knit him lots of rainbow stuff so maybe I will swap them. I don't know. I can't decide. Um, but I will knit um, a couple pairs of socks for the kids out of this and then if there is leftovers I might get a pair of shorties for me. I don't know. I did that once last summer and it sort of barely worked to get a full pair for Roxy and um, a shorty pair for me. Um, and I'm thinking maybe if I find some um, contrast for uh, cuff toes and heels, I might be able to just squeak it out, particularly on Miles, because Miles' feet are a little bit smaller than Roxy. Um, Miles is my nephew. Um, and so, and I have that. It doesn't matter that it's not Halloween. I have it in my really fun little Halloween witch's bag, which I absolutely love. This came from the Kicks and Giggles shop, um, which I don't believe is still open. This was several years ago. Um, but Halloween can be any time of year, right? So I pulled it out and I'm working on some socks in there. So that's kind of next on my sock cast on. My guess is you won't see those anytime soon. You might see them in late August when I get back from traveling, um, but that's kind of the next set of socks on my needle. So the other project that you have seen me working on that I have talked about a lot is Roxy's sweater and I am briefly stalled. I actually have been committed to finishing this sweater and I've done quite a bit. Um, last week I told you I finished the sleeves and I went back to the body and added a few more inches to the body and then I also added um, pockets. So you can see that I'm doing kind of um, I, I placed my pocket and then I continued on down with the top of the pocket and then I need to do the um, inside of the pocket and then I am almost done with the pocket but I also I have maybe um, another inch or two to go on the pocket and then um, I have a couple inches of hem. Unfortunately I am getting really close on yarn and I am concerned that I'm not going to make it. And I was okay with the idea of doing um, the pocket lining, basically the inside of the pocket in a different color. Um, but then I started to worry that maybe I wasn't going to have enough left for um, all of the ribbing because I still have, where'd my other ball of yarn go? Oh, it fell down over there. So I have about this much times two to get through another four inches of knitting and I am not clear that I'm going to make it. So I sat and thought about it for a while and decided what I wanted to do and ultimately I decided to go ahead and purchase another skein. My feeling is that if um, if I don't need the skein, if I, if I actually like eke this out, great, no problem. If I have it, I need it, then I can make the pockets match, which is nice. I did, you know, I was okay with the idea of contrasting pockets, but not if I'm also going to run out of the bottom of the hem. Um, and then my thought is that with whatever is left over, which should be plenty, um, because these skeins are 250 yards of worsted weight, um, I think the only reason I'm running out on this pattern is because it's kind of a long sweater um, and it has long sleeves and it's got a big oversized collar. Um, so like I said, I don't know for sure that I'm going to run out, but my concern is that if I do also that I don't have to rip back to, to um, kind of blend in a new skein. So I went ahead and ordered another skein and I figured that the leftovers from that I can use to make Roxy either hats or a uh, hat or mittens um, for her uh, winter wear. So and a matching hat might be kind of cute with her sweater. I don't know. So I'm kind of stalled because I don't want to knit too much further on this. Um, again, because I'm afraid that if I need to add another skein in, I'll probably just wind it up and start blending it in now so that I um, have enough to carry me through. So I kind of put this on hold last night when I ordered a skein and I ordered it from 8 Knit, which means I think it's already shipped today, which means it will be here in two or three days. So it will not be a long pause. I'm still on track to finish this one by the end of the month. Um, but I decided I think I'm going to put it aside um, for a few days and just wait for that additional skein. Um, so this is the Cinnamon Sweater by Elena Nodell. Um, I have shown it to you quite a few times and hopefully by the next time I show it to you it will be finished because that is my 
my goal. Um, but again, I'm just waiting for a little bit more yarn. This is Dream in Color Classy, which is their worsted in the colorway Rosy. I'm hoping it will be the same dye lot because that's where I got it from before, although it was a few months ago. So if it's not, um, hopefully it will be close enough to blend in. If not, I will figure something out and as Tim Gunn says, make it work. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of Tim Gunn or Project Runway, but but I always love his kind of make it work, figure it out, get it done. So um, so that's kind of where I'm at with this project right now. Um, I am stalled for a few minutes, but um, by the end of the month, I should be done. So let's talk about what I'm going to knit in the meantime, because I finished a couple projects. Um, I am expecting more samples in the mail, plus I know I'm going to be traveling, and so I don't want to cast on a ton of things. And I particularly don't want to cast on something for myself that I will get absorbed in and then have to put it aside. Um, I did think about picking up Oyster again, and I still may, um, but I really have like three weeks to do something um, and possibly less than that because I think sample yarn is already on its way to me and I'll be finishing this sweater. So I tried to think about things that are sort of on my list and things that I need to get to crafting. So the first thing that I thought about was I could do another charity hat because those are a few days of knitting, um, really not a lot. Um, and I have hand spun and all kinds of yarn that I could be knitting scrap hats with. So the first thing that I did is I went ahead and pulled out um, a skein of my hand spun and I wound it up and I'm actually really tickled. I wound it up as a center pull ball. Um, well, okay. A lot of the hats that I am knitting with my old hand spun, I am knitting for Wool Aid um, because they are one of the places that actually takes um, takes um, knits that are um, predominantly wool and they do not have to be superwash. Quite a few of the other places that take um, hats and other garments um, ask that they be superwash or easy care materials. And while I completely agree with that, um, a lot of my hand spun is non superwash wool and so I find um, it hard to use it sometimes. Um, this is a skein that I spun up several years ago. Um, it is, I cannot remember what the actual name of the fiber is. I'll have to look it up. It was a Hello Yarn Braid. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was a Hello Yarn Braid and it was on Kent Romney. Um, might have been a Southern Cross fiber. I have to go back and look. Um, it was in my shop um, back when I was doing pirate names. So it had a pirate themed name that has nothing to do with whatever the name of the fiber is. Um, but this is a two ply Kent Romney that I spun um, and it is in summer colorways. So it is peaches and um, plums and lavender and um, kind of reds and pinks. And it actually, I'm very tickled because when I wound it up, it actually looks a little bit like a Zauber ball, doesn't it? So um, basically I spun this Romney and I thought I spun it actually fairly thickly. Um, I didn't spin it as thick as I thought. It was a skein that was, you know what, this very well might have been a Southern Cross fiber because it was less than four ounces and usually Hello Yarns are over. Um, so I will go back and look at what this is. I know it was Romney um, and the deal is that I got, uh, it was 3.6 ounces when I finished and it was approximately 300 yards, which sits squarely in the DK camp. And for Wool Aid, they ask that you knit in worsted or bulky um, because they want their garments to be extremely warm because they are going to um, places that have really cold weather and they're trying to keep kids warm um, in the cold. So what I decided that I was going to do, and sort of the reason it is wound this way, is because I wound it into a center pull ball, um, not with the aid of a ball winder. I just hand wound it last night at knit night, um, and I wound it into a center pull ball so that I could uh, double it so that it would be almost a bulky. So I hand wound it, and that's how I ended up with my Zabra ball, and I'm using one from each end, and I started a hat last night, and um, I was a little concerned that doubling hand spun, particularly hand spun that had some barber pulling in it, was just going to make it look messy, but I needn't have worried because my colors kind of lined up, and this is what I've got to start. So it's not very much at all, but it starts in this peachy, and then it goes through the pinky, and then it immediately goes to the dark purple. So I am really, really excited about this. This is just going to be a standard hat. I think I'm knitting 80 stitches on a US 8, um, you know, so it's knitting up kind of a chunky dense gauge. This is for a kid, which is why I selected 80 stitches. Um, if I have any leftover, I might try and do um, matching mitts or a matching cowl. Excuse me. 
And so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, my plan is to finish this hat and I should be able to show it to you by next week. This was just a few minutes on um, Zoom last night and I have some other things I'm working on. Obviously I'll pick the sweater back up. I do have a chicken on the needles, um, but I was really, really excited to get that started. And by next week, that should be a hat that I can share with you. Um, and it's, it's not super soft. It definitely is kind of a rustic wool, um, which I think might be why it didn't sell when it was in my shop and why I haven't used it for my own needs. Um, my thought is that maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up under the brim and maybe do about two inches in a fingering weight yarn that um, matches or contrasts nicely and just do like a real wide brim on the top in a softer fabric so that even though this is a very um, hardy and hard wearing wool, um, it will be soft around their forehead when they wear it. So um, that's kind of the plan for this. And that's this hat um, that I will be working on. And again, it's for kids, so that's why it's a little bit on the smaller side. Um, but most of my hats that I knit for kids with worsted weight, I do about 80 to 90 stitches. And I find that that hits um, most of the young range um, very well. So that's what I'm working on there. Um, the final thing that I wanted to bring is a project that I wasn't sure precisely when I was going to cast on, but it does need to get done, and soon at that, and that is Miles' birthday sweater. Obviously, I have been sharing with you Roxy's birthday sweater, um, but Miles, her brother, has a birthday actually a week before she does, um, and so I need to knit him his birthday sweater as well, and I do not plan to take either of the sweaters with me on vacation in August, um, because luggage space is at a premium. We're going to be doing a lot of moving and settling and resettling. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about what we're doing uh, in the coming weeks, um, but I do not want to take a full sweater quantity with me. Um, I just didn't want to deal with that, um, so I am not. So um, Miles' sweater, um, I got the idea for this uh, several um, months ago, probably about six months ago. Uh, my, my nephew Miles, who's going to be six, is absolutely obsessed with Super Mario. Um, his dad is a video game fan and he has Super Mario everything. He doesn't actually play a lot of Super Mario um, video games, but he has the Super Mario Legos and he has everything is Super Mario to him. And actually, I'm glad that I asked him because um, it used to be Mario, 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 and now everything is Luigi. Anyway, I found a pattern on Ravelry that um, I hesitate to mention because I'm sure that if... Um, the powers that be get wind of it, they will not be able to sell it anymore. It is a um, double knit, a pattern for a double knit scarf that has all kinds of Super Mario Brothers motifs all over it. And tons of work has gone into the pattern. The charts are amazing. Um, it produces an amazing double knit scarf. Um, but my guess is that if, um, if it got out that they were selling a pattern, um, you know, um, uh, NES, Nintendo would probably go after them, so I don't want to publicize that so much. But I went ahead and quietly bought it and downloaded it so that I would have the charts. Um, because, like I said, Miles is obsessed, and um, he probably won't be for that many more years or won't want to wear a sweater with something like that um, for a while. So I decided I was not going to do the double knit. At first I thought I might do the double knit scarf, and then I thought that is going to be a lot of work for a kid who may potentially lose the scarf. Um, and it is a full adult size scarf and he's a tiny kid, so um, I don't think that's the perfect project for now. That may be a project for one day, but for now what I decided to do is knit a fairly plain sweater and then I am going to duplicate stitch some of the motifs from the charts um, onto his sweater. So my thought was that I could knit a pretty plain sweater and then, for instance, have um, originally I thought maybe Mario and some magic mushrooms or some coins or some pipes or, you know, whatever across the bottom of the sweater. So it would be kind of a regular sweater, but it would also have fun Mario stuff on it. Um, so ultimately, like I said, um, Miles told me his favorite is now Luigi. So I wanted to show you. Um, I went ahead and ordered three skeins of Dream in Color Classy. Um, I really, really like Dream in Color Classy for a variety of reasons. It is, um, it is beautifully kettle dyed, so it gives me the depth that I am looking for um, when I'm looking for um, like semi-solid colorways. Um, they are a little bit less expensive than some of the indie dyed, which is not normally a concern for me, but at the same time I am making a sweater for a six-year-old that he'll likely outgrow in the next year or two. So um, if I don't want to spend $100 on a sweater, although I'm 
kind of mostly there now. Um, but they, they make, um, and their yardage is really great. Whereas a lot of worsted indie dyed skeins are only 200 yards per skein, um, Dream and Color Classy comes 250 yards per skein. So that's kind of why I use this for the kids' sweaters. Um, I also use it for stuff for me, but I, it's, it's a good kind of um, in between. It is certainly not a cascade or another workhorse yarn, um, which is fine with me um, because like I said, I'm kind of spoiled. I prefer um, kind of the subtle color variation on indie dyed or, um, you know, uh, kettle dyed skeins, um, but it's kind of a, a medium point. I also get most of it through Eat Sleep Knit and they have a really, really good, um, Every time you order from them, you get discount cards, you get to join a team, the more yardage you use or purchase each year, um, the more rewards you get. So I was pretty excited to just go ahead and do this. And actually, um, so I ordered these two sweater quantities a while ago. I ordered them, um, you know what? I ordered these, I think I ordered these for the kids' sweaters back um, at Thanksgiving when they were having their Thanksgiving sale um, because they always have um, a great sale on Thanksgiving. So I think I ordered them then. Um, and I had racked up enough award points that um, that uh, when I ordered the extra skein for Roxy's, it was free except for shipping, <laughs> which was great. I was like, sure, great. Anyway, this is Dreaming Color, Dream Color Classy in their worsted weight in the colorway bedtime, which I've actually used before. It is a great um, kind of a cross between a royal and a navy. Um, it is just a beautiful colorway, and I thought it would be a nice background. And originally, I thought since I was going to do Mario that I was going to use red yarn to duplicate stitch. But um, since I was informed that Luigi is all the rage right now, um, I am going to use a green yarn. And I have been trying to decide what green yarn to get and, um, you know, was trying to think about what would work perfectly. And then, wouldn't you know it, um, last week Neighborhood Fiber Company sent me an email. And Neighborhood Fiber Company is um, a great indie dyed studio out of, um, well, they're out of the East Coast. I think they're in Baltimore. Um, and they do amazing semi-solids. She also does some variegated, but her semi-solids are absolutely amazing. She has all the hues of the rainbow. And um, Romy, uh, Romy Hill, um, Romy Designs, just released a kerchief in the United States. Oh, this is going to get political and require lots of explanation. Um, so uh, the Supreme Court struck down Roe versus Wade a few weeks ago. I think it's been between three and a half and four weeks now, um, which sort of, I won't say guaranteed a woman's right to an abortion, but it certainly protected a woman's right to abortion. And the Supreme Court struck that down a few weeks ago. So now um, many places in the United States are racing to enact abortion bans. Um, protesters of um, protesters for the right to um, make the choice for yourself. So pro-choice, um, and I won't literally say pro-abortion, but pro-choice um, demonstrators for a while now have been using the color green. Um, and this started actually, I think, in South America, um, but around the world have been using the color green um, to protest for choice. And Romy designed a um, kerchief pattern um, the proceeds of which I believe are going to, um, to um, fund pro-choice um, legislation and um, pro-choice activism. And she put it out to, um, when she got ready to release this pattern, she offered to give the pattern free to any dyers who wanted to dye colors um, and do samples up of this pattern in a color of their yarn. And Neighborhood Fiber Company is, um, I would say, very proactive politically. They uh, did all sorts of colors. Um, at the, the, the ones that I absolutely loved were they did a whole series of colorways right after um, President Biden's inauguration, where they took um, everyone, they, they took President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden's dresses. They also took um, uh, uh, Michelle Obama's dress, and they took a variety, oh, they took, um, the poet laureate uh, Amanda Gorman. They took her dress. Um, they took a variety of dresses and did a bunch of themed colorways. Um, and a lot of their colorways support causes. Anyway, I just happened to receive an email last week about a green that they were, I think it's maybe a colorway that they had before. It may not be. Um, a colorway that they had before that they were bringing back for um, Romy's cowl. And the colorway is called Clintonville. And I think that's because all of their, um, all of Neighborhood Fiber Company's colorways are named after places in Washington, DC. So um, I was like, oh, they're doing green yarn for a good cause and I need a bright green. And so I ordered it. <laughs> 
So I will only use a small portion of the skein because um, mostly what I'm using it for, I don't really count the cost of this skein against his sweater because what I'm using it for will be a little bit of duplicate stitch on the bottom hem. And this is a skein I actually ordered Studio DK rather than worsted. I felt like as long as I was gonna go ahead, so the, pat the Romy's cowl pattern is in DK weight. So they are dyeing their coloring on DK weight. Normally I would order a similar weight, except for the fact that I'm doing duplicate stitch, so it does not matter to me if the weight of the yarn is slightly less than the weight of the yarn in the pattern, because of course duplicate stitch is already going to be a little bit bulkier. Um, so I went ahead and ordered one skein of DK, and this has 275 yards to 4 ounces. Um, so my guess is I will use 50 yards tops, um, embellishing Miles' sweater, and I thought these looked really great together. I think the green will pop on the blue when I do the duplicate stitch. Um, so I am really, really excited about this. Um, what pattern am I using for his top-down raglan? I don't know. Um, I put aside a couple that I saw the last time I looked at sweaters. Um, I was I was sold on the cinnamon pattern for Roxy, and then I had to take a little more time to figure out what I wanted to do for Miles. Um, I am not going to knit him a flax by Tin K Knits, because that's the pattern that I used for his sweater last year. Um, so I am just going to find a pretty simple top-down raglan, um, something that um, the one thing about the flax was it had kind of a wide neck when I was finished with it. Now that is because I knit flax light, um, but my plan is to knit him just a very plain top-down raglan, just simple, um, mindless, no thinking for me, and then spend all my effort on um, doing the duplicate stitch. So my hope is that I'll get started on this and maybe get around to the arm separation or even finish most of the body before I leave on vacation. I don't know if that's possible. If it's not, I'll live. I will have all of September and a little bit of October to finish it when I get back, but I thought why not um, get a head start on a fall project that needs knitting um, now. So I am restraining myself from casting on for things for myself. Sort of. So let me take a sip of tea and then we'll go on to spinning. So I feel like I don't have a lot to show you in spinning for the fact that I have been spinning obsessively, except it actually is a lot. It's just one thing. So I showed you um, a bag, a patchwork kit from Hello Yarn. Her patchwork kits are um, seconds and leftover bits of fiber, leftover from all of her dyeing, um, whether it be for clubs or for updates or whatever, and she weighs them out and it's lots of little pieces. Usually the pieces are an ounce or two and she weighs them out and puts them in a bag and sells them. She calls them patchwork kits. Um, and oftentimes, um, well, it depends on the patchwork kits. Um, before she started dyeing a lot of semi-solids, her patchwork kits were always pretty much fibers that went together. So either they were the same base or they were kind of the same colorways. Um, now she does some patchwork kits that are a whole bunch of different solids. They, those would be great for color work. Um, but my patchwork kit was a bunch of really warm tones. It was a whole variety of fibers. I don't entirely know. Some were kind of scratchy, some were not. Um, you know, some were real soft and some were more rustic. Um, and they were all in kind of warm golds, browns, russets with some um, reds in there and then also um, a little bit of blue and occasionally some green, um, but, but mostly really warm tones. And um, because I was freaking out that I wouldn't have enough, and I don't know why I did that because now I'm gonna have way more than enough, probably way more than I need, um, I went ahead and added a fifth braid to it. So basically I spun 20 ounces of fiber in the last week and a half or so, and I have plied it all up. So I have lots of fiber to show you, but it's all kind of one thing. So this is the yarn that I have created. Um, these two are not washed yet. I just finished um, this last little one yesterday. So I will start with, basically the way I spun this is I took my braid and I tore it up into a bunch of strips and I took all the strips in the patchwork kit and tore it up into a bunch of strips. And then I just tossed them kind of up in the air and indiscriminately spun a bunch of bobbins from them um, and then plied together. So maximum barber pulling, sometimes the colors overlap, sometimes they don't. Um, for the most part, they are pretty consistently in the same color range, but they do have some fun pops. So this was the first skein that I finished. And like I said, as, I, as you can see, it's gold and oranges, but then there are all these weird pops. Like here, there's a bunch of teal and a bunch of really dark. And then there are also some spots where you have like a burgundy and a lavender. 
Um, and yeah, for this skin, the, the reel is like, there's a dark and there's a bunch of teal in there. And there was only like one or two braids that had teal in that one or two bump little bits of fiber that had blue in there, but I love it. And you get this like swampy green here. This is just gorgeous. So this is 7.6 ounces and 467 yards, which means I spun at approximately a worsted weight. Um, that makes me super, super happy because generally if I go to my default, it is spinning um, generally fingering to sport weight at this point. And so this was actually an exercise in spinning thicker for me. Um, and it was actually pretty easy to do once I did it. I just really had to get used to drafting more fiber. Um, and one of the things that I will say that made it easier is so um, I think I told you what I'm going to use this for. Um, I knit chickens for the City Girl Farm, um, and you can find that online. I have put that a link in the show notes. Um, these are chicken footstools, and the inside of them is um, wood and bronze and um, other metal, and then they um, have soft bodies. They're covered with um, fabric and um, soft filling. Um, and then we uh, decorate them on the outside, and that's the part where I come in. I knit a lot of pieces to um, be sewn to these chicken footstools. Um, generally, all, all the chicken footstools that, that the City Girl Farm does are made of wool. They source basically the same wool for everything, and then what happens is either um, the wool is spun and knit into things, or potentially crocheted into things, um, or the wool is felted and then designed um, that way. So they are um, a labor of love. They are art pieces. They are not really, even though they're called the chicken, the original chicken footstool, um, they are not really meant to be a footstool. I mean, you certainly could put your feet on them, but they are art pieces. And um, I have been working with them for several years now, knitting for them, and this, in the last year or two, I have been working for them on a regular basis, meaning almost every Friday afternoon I drive up there and I drop off what I've been working on and pick up more materials. Um, or I should say it's not every week, but it's probably 30 to 35 weeks out of the year. Um, sometimes they give me more than I can finish in one week. We all take some vacations. Sometimes there just isn't material ready. Um, in general, I don't do a lot of spinning for them. I do a little bit, but um, a lot of the yarn that we use is very thick and bulky or it's thick and thin yarn and I just don't spin that way. One of the perks of being a chickener, as we're called, is that if you are working there regularly, you have the opportunity to design your own chicken. So basically, I get to make my own chicken um, as my own art piece, as kind of a perk of working there. So I had to think about what I wanted my chicken to look like and what kind of materials I wanted to use. And for a while, I was really stumped on what I wanted because part of me wants to make my entire, totally make my own chicken. Um, and part of me wanted to ask someone to help me um, and make like a felted chicken or something that I don't already have talent in so that I could have something really cool. Ultimately, I decided um, there is kind of a chicken that I'm sort of known for creating there. Um, and I didn't invent it. I didn't design it. I just have knit a whole bunch of them and they have sort of become my thing. Um, and that is, um, they're kind of pinstripe chickens where I take two colors and I basically pinstripe all the feathers that I do for them. Um, and they take a lot of time, a lot of time, way more time than anything else that I do because you are almost knitting each feather individually. You are at least knitting each feather tip individually and you're like stacking them on top of each other and seaming them together. And there are a million ends to weave in because you're constantly breaking and reattaching to do like all the tips. Um, and they are just really time consuming. And at one point I was chatting with one of my friends about what kind of chicken I was gonna make. And she said, why wouldn't you make a chicken out of your hand spun? Y'all, that never even occurred to me. Like, why the hell wouldn't it occur to me? So this hand spun is gonna turn into feathers for my chicken. And um, the reason, part of why I selected this patchwork kit is because it had really bright warm tones and lots of jewel tones in it and those are the tones that I like but I also picked it because I have um, a sweater quantities worth of some really rustic Shetland that I bought at um, the 
fly away convention a couple years ago and um, I have not been able to turn it into anything because it's more rustic than I would like and unfortunately it has a lot of vegetable matter in it and so every time I pull it out and cake a skein and try to start knitting with it all the vegetable matter falls all over my lap and everywhere and I just find it really really frustrating. Um, plus it's not super soft so I'm a little concerned that when I finish the sweater I'm not going to want to wear it. That's where chickening comes in. So the yarn that we produce for making chickens because they are furniture items, pieces of art, upholstery, um, has to be a lot more um, rustic and hard wearing necessarily than something I might want to wear as a garment or as a hat. I want it to hold up for a long time. So I decided that if I spun these really warm colors and jewel tones, I could combine it with the natural Shetland um, to make this little pinstripe so it would be a light and then a dark and a warm um, and I could create these kind of pinstripe feathers. If all of this is making no sense to you, I promise you're going to get to follow me on this journey because this is just the first step of the journey, which is spinning the yarn that I want to use as the contrast color. Um, my plan in the next week or two is to knit up a sample of um, these feathers so that I can see if I like it and make sure that it is what I want. So um, stay tuned because I don't know that it will be next week, but it will be before I leave on vacation. I would like to knit up a sample and see if this is what I want because then one of my projects for this fall that I'm going to work on for myself is knitting up all the feathers. Um, I do not know yet how to assemble a chicken. So basically I am going to knit all the covering for my chicken so it is ready to go. And then I will book some time at the studio and um, the head knitter who I work for said she would help me. She kind of does a little bit of everything for the studio. Um, and she said she would take a few hours and help me assemble my chicken, including um, placing all the feathers, sewing it down, kind of upholstering and finishing it. So that is the plan for this yarn. As I said, I have two more skeins. Um, this skein is about an eight and a half ounces and um, it actually turned out quite a bit thicker than the first skein, um, but I don't mind, I will use that. Um, and then this baby skein is the last little bit. Remember I said I spun 20 ounces of fiber, which is way more than I need because I probably only need four or 500 yards of fiber for this project. I guess maybe I got confused and I was thinking that, um, so I need four or 500 yards of my hand spun and then four or 500 yards of a neutral. And I think I got in my head that I needed more than a thousand yards. So I just spun up what would be more than a thousand yards. So, um, <laughs> This last skein is about three and a half ounces. It is what is left after these two skeins. Um, and my plan with this skein actually is to get this one into the sink tonight. You can see that this is um, a little bit curlier. It just hasn't been washed and set, um, but it has all the lovely colors of before. It doesn't have that blue, but it does have some really pretty purple sections. Um, and so my plan is to wash and set this skein immediately. And this is gonna be my sample skein. So in another day or two, I hope I'm gonna start knitting this. Um, this is is the only thing for myself that I will allow myself to cast on because like I said I just want to do um we kind of create the feathers in bunches and so what I want to do is create one bunch of feathers and see how it looks and if I like it and if I want to move forward with it before I do the rest of the project. So um, I likely will have yarn left over and I should say it's super funny. So I finished this game last night around 7 or 7.30 and I was in my living room and the living room night light is not great. It is um, very, very yellow and it is very dim. And as I was winding the skein off, all that I could see were kind of these colors here. I could see like the pink and the orange and the yellow and maybe a little bit of the, um, uh, uh, the kind of pink peachy and then maybe a little bit of the red and I could not see any other colors in here and I was really bummed because I was like oh I was going to use this skein to um knit up the sample but if it only is like I think this was the section that I saw where it's just like peach and pink and yellow and swampy green and you know and I was like oh if that's all that's in that skein I'm not going to use that skein because I don't like that skein then I came in here and flipped it over and saw like in in um more natural light in this room because I have some natural lights and I have a big window in here and I came in here and all of a sudden was like oh there's like a million colors in here there's purple there's yellow there's like all the colors. So um, I came in and I was really, really happy. Um, so now I'm going to use this as my practice game.
So that was quite a bit of um, stuff. I am starting a few new braids for Tour de Fleece. They are out by my wheel now, so my hope is that I will get another um, bit spun. I have already spun two full braids. Um, well, okay, technically I only spun one because one of them was mostly spun before the tour, but I plied it. So, um, so far I have basically spun the equivalent of six braids, which is a pound and a half of fiber. Um, and if I can get through even one more, I will be very, very pleased. My goal is usually two pounds of fiber, but if I get to a pound and three quarters, I will be more than pleased. The Tour de Fleece runs through this Sunday. No, it runs a little bit longer too. No, this Sunday. The Tour de Fleece ends this Sunday. Um, there is still time to get involved if you would like to. We have a team, Team CKT, um, and we have a thread on Ravelry. We have a uh, Facebook group, and you can use Team CKT um, 2022 on Instagram. Um, I'll probably draw for another prize or two today or tomorrow, and then we will have the final thread, um, which will likely be right after I record next. Um, probably, I usually give people till about Tuesday to get photos of all their finished spins up and um, then I award a grand prize based on that. So thank you for hanging with me. I know this one was a little longer, but I wanted to go into details about what some of my plans are for my upcoming knits and future projects. I hope that you are having a wonderful week, that you are managing to stay cool wherever you are. I know um, Europe is experiencing a huge heat wave right now, and I see all of my British friends um, don't have air conditioning and it's so hot and I am so sorry because we have that weather here normally but of course since we have it here normally we have air conditioning um, and that makes all the difference in the world. Um, I wish you a lovely week ahead. I hope you can find some respite from the heat. Um, I hope you find some crafting that you enjoy doing and I will see you next Monday. Until then I will say happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping and I'll see you next time. Bye!